Appreciate everybody getting on for our uh, 2020 annual meeting of the Republican River Compact Administration. My name is Jesse Bradley. I'm currently the interim director at the Nebraska Department of Natural Resources and serving as the chair of the Republican River Compact Administration this year. Uh, I guess just a few kind of housekeeping items before we get going into the agenda. Um, with us today, we have Linda Roman. She'll be doing a transcript of this meeting. Uh, Linda, may, Linda may ask to make sure that you identify yourself when you're talking and uh, make sure we can get a good transcript, uh, make sure that your audio is working well. Uh, we'll also be doing a recording of this meeting using Zoom. Uh, that's to assist with developing that transcript. And then we'll also plan on posting uh, the recording on the website of the Republican River Compact Administration after the meeting. Um, I'm, I'm sitting here at a listening location in McCook, Nebraska. Uh, I don't have any uh, public here with me, but I do have uh, Tom Riley uh, of the Flatwater Group currently, and Justin Levine of the Nebraska Attorney General's Office with me. I'm uh, going to go ahead and suggest that as we do introductions, I'll go ahead and do my best to introduce uh, all the folks that I, I recognize and can identify from Nebraska and the various agencies. And then I'll turn it over to Kevin and Chris to do likewise. And if we miss anybody, we'll certainly try to do our best to, to make sure we get you identified. We'd like to have a full listing of attendees uh, for the transcript if possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and start down the list of participants uh, with, with us today. I have. Uh, our engineering committee rep, Carol Flowdy, is with me. And then uh, Elizabeth Essex and uh, Carrie Berger are assisting with the Zoom operations and will be handling some of the documents. Also have uh, Carrie Weiss from our water planning group on. I see Shane Stanton from our Cambridge field office is on. Um, not sure if we have other staff on, but uh, certainly other Nebraska folks, I see we have Brad Edgerton with the Frenchman Cambridge Irrigation District, uh, Chance Thayer with the Flatwater Group, David Cratchman with the Flatwater Group, looks like Don Blankenau with uh, Outside Council, uh, Dustin Wilcox from the Nebraska Association of Resource Districts, uh, Jesse Winter, who is also a, with our uh, planning group at the Department of Natural Resources. I see Keith Copel, uh, that would be with our Nebraska Game and Parks Commission. Michelle Cook with our Nebraska Game and Parks Commission. Scott Dickey, he's with the Lower Republican Natural Resources District. Tom Wilmoth with Outside Council. And I believe that's everybody I saw on from Nebraska. Did I miss any Nebraska folks that uh, would want to go ahead and identify themselves? Okay, well we with that. Added a, we just added a 402 number, which I'm assuming is Nebraska. So when they get okay. connected. Yeah, it looks like we just had a number come on, uh, 402-476-0042. Uh, can we get the name of that person? Possible? Uh, Ken and Meyer. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll move on to you, Chris, if you want to go ahead and do your best introductions for the folks from Kansas. Sure. Thank you, Jesse. I'm Chris Badel with the Kansas Department of Agriculture's Division of Water Resources. Um, I'm serving as acting chief engineer for the uh, Division of Water Resources and also as a Kansas commissioner uh, for the time being. Um, with me on the call today on the Zoom, um, we have Kenneth Titus, who's Chief Counsel for KDA. And we have DWR staff, uh, Sam Perkins, Chelsea Erickson, Hongxin Kao, 
I think I saw Kelly Stewart and Lane Letourneau. We also have Curtis Wired from the Kansas Attorney General's Office. We have Director of the Kansas Water Office, Earl Lewis, and Katie Goff, also of the Kansas Water Office. And I saw Pete Guile from Kansas Bostwick Irrigation District giving us the thumbs up. So um, I think that is all I saw from Kansas. Uh, and if there's anyone else from Kansas that I missed, please go ahead and identify yourself at this time. Okay, I think that's it for us, Jesse. Okay, thanks, Chris. Um, Kevin, I guess I'll turn it over to you if you want to do your best to introduce folks from Colorado that are on. Thank you, Jesse, happy to do that. We have, of course, I'm the state engineer, director of the Division of Water Resources, and with us today, Mike Sullivan, deputy state engineer and deputy director of the Division of Water Resources. From our staff, we have Ivan Franco. He's our representative on the, engineer, on the engineering committee. And from the Attorney General's office, Dan Stoyer and Scott Steinbecker may or may not be joining us. I know that he was splitting time between a few obligations. And also Les Owen from the Colorado Department of Agriculture is with us today. And also from uh, Colorado, I, I see that we have David Robbins and uh, also Pete Ampey, I believe, from Hill and Robbins. I see that uh, Rod Lenz and Susanna Baker from Republican River Water Conservation District is here. And then also uh, Willem Schroeder from Principia Mathematica is joining us today. And I believe that's as I go down the list, that's who I see from Colorado right now. Did, and I'll open it up as, as Chris did to anyone I may have missed. Okay, thanks Kevin. Um, I guess I'll turn it over to the, uh, the federal agencies that are on. Uh, Craig, do you wanna introduce your, yourself and who's there with you? Yes, thanks, Jesse. Um, so I'm Craig Scott, um, O&M manager here at the Bureau of Reclamation in McCook, part of the Nebraska, Kansas area office. And joining me today is Miles Morgan. Okay, thank you very much, Craig. Um, I don't believe we have anybody on from the Corps of Engineers. If there is, uh, you could please identify yourself, but I'm, I'm pretty sure we didn't have anybody on. Um, I see we had a couple of folks on from the USGS. I think uh, Jason Lambrecht, do you want to introduce your folks from the GS there? Absolutely. Thanks, Jesse. Good morning, all. I uh, uh, Myself, I'm, uh, I'm the data chief out of the, the Lincoln office in Nebraska for the USGS. And also on, on call, we have John Miller, who's our field office chief for the North Platte field office. And his office actually monitors most of the rivers of the Republican across Nebraska. Okay, thanks, Jason. Okay, I think that should complete introductions, but I will check one more time just to make sure we didn't miss anybody. Uh, is there anybody we didn't uh, catch on the introductions? Jesse, okay. Jesse, this is Michelle Cook. I'm not sure if you got Brett Roberg. He's also from the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission. He's stationed in the Kearney office. He's a fish and wildlife biologist. Okay, yep, I believe I, I missed Brett, so I'm glad you caught that one, Michelle. Okay, well with that, we'll go ahead and uh, move on down our agenda. Uh, our next item on the agenda is to adopt the agenda. So I guess I would be looking for a, a motion to adopt the agenda for today's meeting. I would move to adopt the agenda. I'll second that. Kevin Ryan. Okay, okay so we have Chris motion and Kevin second. Okay, um, we'll go ahead and take that vote on that. Um, all in favor of adopting today's agenda and moving forward with the meeting. Say aye. 
Okay. 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 So we've adopted our agenda and we can keep moving forward here. Uh, next step up on the agenda is to uh, discuss the status of the 2019 annual report and uh, possible action we'll take there. I think that's maybe uh, something for Kansas or Chelsea or Chris. Do you want to take the lead on that? Chelsea, would you uh, go ahead and present the 2019 annual report? Yeah, Just I was responsible for the creation of the 2019 RCA annual report. The report consisted of two meetings. The uh, first was a special meeting held in Broomfield, Colorado on November 6, 2018. The summary and minutes were created using a voice recording. The second meeting was the annual meeting of the RCA on August 22nd, 2019 held in Colby, Kansas. The official minutes of that meeting is the transcript. A summary was also created from the transcript. I would like to thank everyone who has had a hand in reviewing and assembling the final report, specifically the annual meeting transcript and the two summaries. The final product was definitely a group effort and we all can be proud to <laughs> present the 2019 annual report to the RCA commissioners for their approval. Mr. Chairman, I, uh, I move that we accept the 2019 annual report as presented. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Kevin Ryan, I second that. Okay, so we've got a first and second on adoption of the 2019 annual report. Um, any discussion for the discussion on that? Okay, with that, uh, we'll take the vote. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. Kansas says aye. Colorado says aye. Nebraska's aye. Okay, so that motion passes and we've uh, adopted our 2019 annual report. So we're making good progress. We'll just keep chugging away here on the agenda. Um, Next up is our uh, commissioner's report. It uh, looks like we're going to start off with the state of Kansas. Uh, Chris, if you want to lead off for Kansas on the uh, commissioner's report. Yes, thank you, Jesse. Uh, well, good morning and thank you to Nebraska for braving the first ever virtual Republican River Compact meeting. Um, it's nice to see you all, even if it's not in person, but the compact must go on. So uh, I'll start out with climate conditions and water supply. Um, and the water supply conditions during the 2020 growing season started off a little dry over large parts of the state, but has since improved over much of Western Kansas anyway. Uh, significant portions of Western and Southeastern Kansas remain moderate, moderately to severely dry to this date. Uh, even though conditions have at times been dry across the state, thanks to timely rains, we haven't had to do any minimum desirable streamflow administration yet this year, so we'll, we're thankful for that. The drought monitor shows that the South Fork Republican River Basin started getting dry in late September 2019. South Fork flows were in single digits at Bankelman from mid-April 2020 until they finally went to zero in mid-June of this year and stayed there until July 24th, when between 7.45 and 8 o'clock a.m., the gauge went from zero to 772 cubic feet per second. Then 15 minutes later, it went to 2,260 cubic feet per second, topping out at about 11 o'clock in the morning at 5,360 cubic feet per second. The storm event caused a lot of flooding in the area, but moved on pretty quickly and flows tailed off steadily afterwards, dropping down to single digits in early August where they remain today. Uh, despite that storm and all that water that came with it, the drought monitor still shows the sub-basin as abnormally dry. Now moving on to legislation, uh, the COVID-19 virus and ensuing pandemic slowed our legislature down considerably this year. We were following just three water-related bills through the process, but they were not among the very few bills that were acted on this year. Um, 
just to give a sense of how it affected the legislature, there were 328 bills carried over from 2019 and 355 new bills introduced this year. And of those total 683 bills, 11 were passed by both houses and presented to the governor. Seven were signed and four were vetoed. So not the greatest productive uh, season for the legislature this year. In the Upper Republican River Basin, um, I want to talk a little bit about the local enhanced management areas that we have. In 2012, the Kansas Groundwater Management District Act was amended to allow the districts to initiate the creation of these special management areas in over-appropriated areas, providing a two-hearing process for their consideration. As we reported last year, the Sheridan 6 Lima um, was renewed for 2018 through 2022 and continues to operate. Building on the success of the Sheridan 6 Lima, GMD number four developed a district-wide Lima, which will also run from 2018 to, to 2022, and places pumping restrictions based on the rate of water level declines at the township scale. A group of interveners challenged the constitutionality of the Lima law in district court, but in its October 15, 2019 order, the court upheld the chief engineer's decision and the Lima law. So we're happy about that. Building on their success, uh, their successful Lima process, um, GMD4 has started a certified irrigator program in the spirit of the master irrigator programs that have been developed in Texas and now starting to be developed in Colorado as well. They're just getting started putting the curriculum together and the goals similar to the master irrigator programs are to help producers find water efficiency tools and strategies for their operations, educate these producers on how to become better water managers and foster a local community committed to water use efficiency, along with building networks of organizations, other stakeholders, all working together towards extending the life of the aquifer. So these actions generate a lot of work and consequently a lot of heat. Um, so we commend GMD number four for taking action to secure their future and we are committed to supporting them as they work so hard for their community. Not quite in the Republican River Basin, but just south of it, the West Central Kansas GMD number one approved a Lima plan and sent it to the chief engineer in late March, 2020. That started the formal two hearing process GMD1's Wichita County Lima plan proposes to reduce pumping from the 2009 to 2015 levels by between 15% and a little over 20%. And that range depends on the voluntary participation of vested water rights. If, if, if all the vested water rights participated, you'd get to that uh, little over 20% reduction. The initial hearing was held just one week ago today. It was a hybrid virtual hearing kind of like this one. Uh, in person, uh, they were in Leody, and uh, the hearing officer and the uh, court reporter were at KDA headquarters in Manhattan. It went pretty well, free of technical difficulties. If the first hearing, uh, which focuses mostly on findings of fact, is favorable, then a second hearing to consider the merits of the plan will be held. And if the second hearing is favorable, then the Lima will be designated and the plan will be ordered. GMD1 is hoping that the plan will be in effect uh, beginning in 2021, so next year. Um, we continue to develop and refine methods to determine if our water management tools are working as intended. Uh, we've developed a technique um, that we've been working on for the last couple of years to evaluate the changes in irrigation behavior by establishing a relationship between seasonal precipitation and irrigation application using that relationship to predict future behavior and then observing whether implementing the management tool caused a change in behavior. Using this technique, we've observed that the water use by the irrigators in GMD number four's Sheridan 6 Lima was 30% less on average over the period 2013 to 2018 than the water use that was predicted over that time. And similarly, um, we've observed that the district-wide Lima the GMB4 district-wide Lima, which started in 2018, uh, the water use was over 30% less than predicted as well. 
in 2019 alone. And that's a savings in one year of uh, 120,000 acre feet. So we're very encouraged by uh, the savings that we're seeing and the ability to be able to measure that. We've recently been doing some analysis in the Republican River Basin, and we're planning to share that in the engineering committee this year and have a discussion on that. Um, in the lower Republican River Basin, thanks to a very wet 2019, water supplies were very good for Kansas Bostwick Irrigation District, District, both in 2019 and in 2020. Harlan County Lake remained in the flood pool well into the irrigation season this year and is still around 95% of the multi-purpose pool uh, last time I checked. KBID has been very successful in leveraging litigation damages money paid by Nebraska to make improvements to the district's water conveyance systems. In 2019 and so far this year, KBID has replaced about five miles of leaky and difficult to maintain open canal with buried pipe. KBID secured water smart grants from the Bureau of Reclamation and contributed about 40% of the cost of the projects through their own labor and equipment. KBID estimates that these improvements will save on the order of 725 acre feet per year. On our water conservation areas, uh, in 2015, our legislature created the water conservation area, which is where a, a water owner or a group of water owners can enter into an agreement with the chief engineer to reduce groundwater withdrawals to extend the usable life of the aquifer, typically with increased flexibility to manage the reduced use. We now have 53 water conservation areas covering over 86,000 acres and over 12,000 acre feet of estimated annual water savings. So we're encouraged to see expanded use of this tool and its potential to save water. At this time, I would like to invite Director of the Water Office, Earl Lewis, to uh, update us on a few other items, and then I'll just have a few things to close up with. Earl? Thanks, Chris. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to uh, talk to you all today and, and give you a quick update on a couple of items that, that the Water Office is involved with that uh, overlap here with the things we're talking about with the Republic River Compact. Uh, the first one is the uh, what we're doing with the, the settlement fund, funds from the uh, 2018 Kansas-Colorado settlement for uh, uh, regarding Colorado's past overuse of Republican River, um, particularly the South Fork Republican River. Uh, over the past year or so, we've been investing uh, some of those funds uh, in irrigation technology through a cost share program with local uh, producers in the South Fork. Uh, to date, we have dedicated roughly $250,000 of matching funds uh, towards things such as soil moisture probes, uh, improvements to nozzle packages to optimize our irrigation application uh, with the ultimate goal of, of conserving water and, and making those folks more, um, more efficient. We continue to work with the local stakeholders and community uh, to identify opportunities to improve our water management and uh, water conservation in the area. Uh, we'll be sharing additional funds with them uh, in the coming year. Uh, a couple of the other things besides irrigation technology that uh, the stakeholders locally are interested in working on uh, are removal of phreatophytes, uh, Russian olive and salt cedar in particular, that uh, both for habitat and also for water conservation. Um, and obviously that's a, an issue in a, in a lot of parts of, of uh, Western Kansas and, and I know in Nebraska and Colorado as well. Uh, and then the third thing is uh, uh, maybe a series of lovehead dams within the South Fork Republican River um, to improve aquifer recharge. That's, that's something we're in the very early stages of looking at um, and seeing if that's uh, a viable options, but obviously making sure that uh, we maintain our compact compliance and the delivery of water to Nebraska that, that we need to as well. So uh, we'll keep you updated on that as, as that progresses. The other thing that uh, we wanted to give you an update on is water technology farms. I think maybe we've mentioned this in the past, but water technology farms um, are an initiative that was started about four years ago. Uh, it's a public private partnership in which we work with private vendors uh, and individual producers to demonstrate uh, different water technologies, much like we just mentioned with uh, soil moisture probes, uh, nozzle packages, remote sensing, different uh, pivot management schemes, those type of things. Um, we work with vendors. Uh, the vendors bring these uh, technologies to us. We partner with the producers uh, and we also partner with 
with some of the technical colleges and, of course, K-State University to monitor the effectiveness of these technologies on the property. Uh, and then we ultimately share those results and the technologies through field days and, and uh, videos and other, other ways to producers across the state with the goal of, of trying to encourage the adoption of additional technologies, again, with uh, the, the long-term goal of reducing our draw on the Ogola Aquifer. They started a few years ago with three of them. We now have 17. Uh, started primarily in southwest Kansas with the Ogallala High Plains. Uh, now have expanded into to northwest Kansas, south central, and, and just this year, uh, a couple in north central Kansas. Um, again, uh, we think this is one of the our most successful private, uh, public private partnerships uh, run through the water office. Uh, but again, most of the funding comes from the vendors and uh, outside stakeholders. So with that, uh, Chris, I'll turn it back over to you. And again, I appreciate everybody's um, time and, and good to see everybody here today. Thanks, Earl. Uh, just a couple more things from me. Um, this year, I had the privilege of serving on the engineering committee. And then in March of this year, assuming the duties of Kansas Commissioner to the Compact. In addition to the normal work of the EC, there were two issues discussed among the states in different forums. At last year's RRCA annual meeting in Colby, Nebraska raised an issue with the way that flood flows are handled in the Compact Accounting. As you will hear during the EC report later in the meeting, the states invested significant time working to understand the implications of the issue and developing proposals to resolve it. You will also hear that although the states did not reach an agreement on the resolution to the issue, we did agree to continue to work on the issue with the common goal to resolve the issue before Nebraska's compliance balance could be affected by it. Over the same period, Kansas also raised an issue important to our water users. Kansas believes that the August 24th, 2016 Harlan County Lake Resolution the long-term deal providing full accounting credit to Nebraska for augmentation water they produce and for other compliance activities also provides Kansas with a guarantee that when the basin dries up, as it frequently does, and if Nebraska reasonably, reasonably believes that it will have to pump augmentation water or take other compliance actions, Kansas water users will be guaranteed at least a minimal supply by having access to the water generated by Nebraska's compliance actions in time for the upcoming irrigation season. Nebraska has informed us that they don't necessarily agree with Kansas's interpretation. As part of a review required by the Harlan County Lake Agreement, Kansas raised its issue in the form of the three states meetings where the Harlan County Lake and the Colorado Compliance Pipeline Agreements were both developed after significant work and a series of temporary agreements among the states. Kansas has articulated our issue to the three states group in person and in email correspondence, but we have not seen much progress towards resolving our concerns, partly due to the restrictions put in place by COVID-19. However, it is time to move forward with this discussion. Like Nebraska with its flood flows issue, Kansas needs a commitment from these states to work on Kansas's issue. During the upcoming EC report, Nebraska will read into the record the language that the states have agreed on dealing with Nebraska's flood flow issue. Kansas understands that these issues need to be documented for our successors and we agree with that. In the same spirit, Kansas also needs to state on the record that our issue with the interpretation of the Harlan County Lake Agreement also needs to be addressed and the required review of the Harlan County Lake Agreement needs to be completed. The Harlan County Lake Agreement has an annual deadline of October 1 for Kansas and Nebraska to discuss the next year's water supply. We need a commitment from Nebraska that we will have a robust discussion of Kansas's issue by that October 1 deadline so that Kansas can assure our water users that the long-term agreement is still working as intended and with the desired effect. And finally, uh, just a couple of changes to the Kansas delegation. Um, on February 29th, 2020, Kansas Chief Engineer David Barfield retired after 35 years of state service, including 12 years as Chief Engineer and ex officio Commissioner of the Republican River Compact. Kansas will offer a resolution honoring Mr. Barfield's service to the compact later in today's meeting. On March 2nd, 2020, 
I was appointed acting chief engineer and am honored to serve the compact administration as Kansas ex officio commissioner until a permanent appointment is made for the chief engineer position. With that, Mr. Chairman, um, my report is done and I would entertain any questions or save that for later. Okay, thanks Chris and Earl for the, the report. Um, I guess maybe I did have one question. Earl, you, you had mentioned some low head dam structures. Uh, where, where were you envisioning those could be developed and would those be kind of on-channel structures, off-channel structures? What, what's kind of the concepts? I'm just curious. Yeah, I think it, obviously it's pretty early. We haven't got to the point of identifying locations and that sort of thing. Um, but the initial thought, um, well, really it was first brought to us by uh, Kansas Department of Wildlife, Parks and Tourism, they've got a couple of, of small wildlife refuges uh, that are on the South Fork uh, Republican River um, and the ability to, to maybe put a little bit of a structure there to, to hold some water, provide again some habitat, um, provide some groundwater recharge. Um, and so they, it could be either, but I think initially the, the thought would be uh, potentially on channel uh, low head dams. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, Kevin, any questions for Chris or uh, did you wanna move on to the Colorado report? I have no follow-up questions for Chris. Uh, if you're ready for me to move on to my report, I can do that. That'd be great, thank you. Okay, thanks again and uh, Thanks to Mike Sullivan and again, the rest of the Colorado group for, for being here today. And I wanna to thank Nebraska for hosting this, uh, this meeting as it is. Jesse, thank you and all your people for doing the work to, to make this so we can actually conduct our meeting and move ahead. As I'll say in a minute, it would be pretty difficult for us uh, otherwise to get permission to travel. And on that, just related to COVID, at our agency and, and throughout much of the state, we are continuing to work from home and will continue to work from home until at the earliest January 1st. And in, in a nutshell, the direction we were given from the start and continue to have is, if you can do your job from home, then do your job from home. And of course, people have critical tasks that they need to do in the office, so we are uh, we do have an allowance for people to do that. That keeps us going. But I bring that up for a couple of reasons. Again, it, it was just absolutely almost impractical for us to seek the permission to travel to McCook. So this this is helpful. Um, that travel is just not allowed. And uh, and also it's it's good for people to know that we are very fortunate that we're able to do our work from home. That I. I can't say we haven't missed a beat, but, but we're really close to it at the Division of Water Resources. So we're grateful for that. The closures, of course, have had a, a financial impact on Colorado um, revenues. As, as you know, our organization is funded by general fund from the state, which is funded by largely by tax revenues. And so that's had an impact on us. And to that, that budget crisis, so to speak, has our agency withstanding a 5% cut. Uh, and, and the way we are staffed, that just comes down to personnel. So we're currently holding 14 positions vacant. Those are not 14 soft positions. Those are 14 positions that we normally have staffed live. And so we, we are just, um, really scrambling and, and being creative to, to balance things, to make sure that we're getting our work done across the state from an administration standpoint. And really grateful to our 250-some, uh, actually now in the 240s or 230s DWR staff that do that. I'll touch on legislation really quickly just around the state. And uh, this year, no legislation that was directly related to the Republican River Basin, but we did have three or four bills that were related to Colorado's in-stream flow program, really just making it a little more robust for people to take advantage of. 
And uh, I, I mentioned that it's interesting that these bills passed because we had this abbreviated session in Colorado that, uh, you know, in June reconvened largely to get us a budget passed that we could use for this fiscal year that we're in right now. But they managed to get some of these bills passed. I'll mention an interesting one to the group. It was our Senate Bill 48 that calls on Colorado to examine our anti-speculation doctrine and the laws that that uh, we use to manage anti-speculation and just evaluate whether those laws are where they need to be, whether they need to be more robust for Colorado. So that's a report that will take place next year. Now, very interesting from a water law, water administration standpoint. More around the state when it comes to drought, it's, it's just another horrible year. Uh, as I look at the NRCS map and, and we see that uh, drought monitor, areas just seem to go from orange to, to red to brown and very difficult to watch that. But uh, in our Yampa River Basin in the northwest part of the state, an area that in almost all the worst years, they still are uh, not on call. Two years ago, we had a call on the Yampa and, and this year we're wondering whether we're going to see that again. So that's how bad it is around the state. And of course, this has just led to some or created conditions where some large fires have just run away, very difficult to manage. Uh, the, the Pine Gulch fire out at the west end of the state, Mesa County, over 125,000 acres. It's now the second largest fire in Colorado history behind the Heyman fire from 2002. That was up in 138,000 acre range. And we have two or three other three other fires of significance. One in Glenwood Canyon, which uh, is not only a, a beautiful canyon, but it's very important to transportation because I-70 goes through there and it's closed down. Uh, so, so the fires are just a, creating a horrible situation in Colorado. And you know, at the other end of the spectrum, we. We had a little flooding. We had some major storms just out east on the um, South Fork and, uh, and the North Fork and saw increased gauge flows, but we also saw a little bit of minor damage in, in places from that. I'll mention on compact compliance. We, I was able to report last year that, that we were in compliance, that we could say we are now in compliance on our five-year number and we remain in compliance and you know, we, we really have to recognize the Republican River Water Conservation District for all their efforts. We continue to work with them on ways to reduce use, find supplies, keep, keep Colorado in compliance. So that's a very positive item. Lastly, I'll mention our compact compliance rules. Again, last year in my report, I. I notified the group, I explained that we had filed our compact compliance rules with the Water Court in January of 2019, and that we had new, numerous parties opposing them. And, and by opposing, I mean just going through that legal mechanism to become a party to the case, not that all of them were in direct opposition. Since then, in, in the past year, we have brought all those parties in through stipulations except one. And so that's that's a big positive. We do have one party that still is concerned about the rules. Mike Sullivan and I have met directly with with that party. And of course, our Attorney General's office is uh, leading communication with them. So we're very hopeful that we can maybe get that matter settled and continue with the rules through water court. That is my report. For this year, uh, Mr. Chair, and I'll be happy to take any questions. Yeah, Kevin, Great. this is Chris. I just had a question about the uh, anti-speculation laws that you were mentioning earlier. I didn't, I didn't get the gist of whether they were being examined to uh, strengthen them or weaken them. What was your sense on that? A very good question, and, and I don't even have to uh, relate what my sense is on it because it's pretty explicit in the language of the bill. Uh, the, and let me just say that 
My boss, the Department of Natural Resources Director, Dan Gibbs, is directed to convene a work group. And the purpose of the work group is to investigate and write a report on whether anti-speculation laws need to be strengthened. So they're given that, that uh, direction. Okay, thank you. You bet. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, any other questions for Kevin from anyone? Okay, well, I can go ahead and uh, give a brief report here from, uh, from Nebraska. Um, you know, again, I, I guess I'd want to start off by, by first thanking all of my staff that have helped uh, put this together. I, I know it's no small feat to put together all the documents and meeting notices and everything that goes into a meeting like this. So certainly want to express my appreciation to them. Uh, also would like to you know, express appreciation to Kansas and Colorado uh, for agreeing to proceed in this manner with this meeting in light of COVID-19. Uh, it's obviously a bit of a unique set of circumstances, but I think, uh, I think this is pretty workable and appreciate uh, the agreement there to kind of move forward in this direction holding the meeting both in a virtual and, and in-person setting here in Cook. I'd also want to recognize our federal partners and their roles and continuing to help support the states with our management efforts in the basin um, and, and assisting with data collection and other uh, activities they do to help out uh, throughout the basin. And of course, I finally would want to thank all of our natural resource district partners, irrigation district partners and producers who continue to work uh, you know, to protect the water resources of the basin and ensure that we continue to meet our uh, compliance obligations under the compact as we have been. So really wanna express my appreciation there. There's a lot of great things going on throughout the basin and uh, certainly appreciate those efforts. Um, obviously we had some, uh, it's, it's been an interesting year for us just like it has been for everyone. Uh, we too, like Kansas had a retirement of our director of our agency. So Jeff Bassett retired on February 28th. I, I guess he beat David by one day. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that was a, a significant change for our agency. And, uh, you know, I, I joke with Jeff, I've talked with him a few times since that he must have had a fantastic crystal ball to uh, have known to get out, you know, two weeks before COVID-19 was going to strike and we were going to have to do all this on the fly reorganization. But, uh, but you know, we've, we've, um, we've done a great job, I think, as an agency, uh, quickly being able to move to this telecommuting environment that we're all working in. Uh, did that fairly seamlessly. And uh, actually our, our state may be, may be a little bit unique. We, we continued to maintain full operations throughout the period. We never sort of closed the office. Uh, field office folks stayed open. Uh, staff continued to report, although of course we too have been trying to decrease sort of the footprint of uh, staff in the building uh, when, when that works for staff to be able to work remotely. We're certainly continuing to encourage that and we're actually strongly considering making that part of our longer term work strategies of having folks working uh, in a telecommuting capacity to help reduce uh, sort of the square footage and footprint of our building reduced rental spaces and other things of that nature. So uh, I think there's a lot of a lot of challenges that have come from this, certainly uh, dealing with COVID-19. But I think obviously I think there's potentially some good on the other side for us too into the future. Um, I guess just in terms of water supply conditions, I, I think it's, it's worth kind of noting uh, because we're here to talk in large part about 2019 and counting. I mean, 2019 was a fairly spectacular year in terms of the, amount of water we had in this basin. A lot of interesting little facts and figures, I think that, uh, you know, that, that I guess I just maybe highlight a couple of them. I mean, the, uh, the overall annual flow that we saw at Hardy, the downstream gauge in the basin was almost six times the flow we saw in 2018. Uh, that's a pretty interesting number, uh, up over 600,000 acre feet total uh, stream flow going out of the basin. Uh, we had peak instantaneous discharge of over 11,000 CFS. So, you know, we mentioned before, or we'll discuss later in this agenda too, 
it actually triggered uh, for the first time the necessity to use uh, flood flow provisions under the compact accounting. So really interesting year in 19, a lot of rainfall, a lot of stream flow. Uh, so, you know, then we, then we then transition into 2020. And I, I swear it was the, the day after Jeff retired that it stopped raining and, and, and seemed to start drying out slowly. <laughs> so uh, we've been seeing like, like Colorado, maybe not to the same degree, certainly, but we've been seeing the drought kind of creep in, especially in the upper end of the basin, kind of Southwest Nebraska, the upper Republican area. But it's also been distributed across the state in some interesting patterns uh, that we don't typically see. So there's been a very spotty year overall in terms of uh, rainfall events in, in areas that are dry and not getting rainfall. Some areas are very wet actually across the state still. So it's it's been a very interesting year in that regard. Uh, obviously, Chris mentioned the significant storm we saw by Binkelman uh, here about a month ago. So that was that was a bit of a surprise. I know my, I was actually on vacation when that happened. I, I thought my uh, thought the website wasn't working correctly when I saw the, the report of the stream flow out there. <laughs> so uh, it, it's definitely quite a quite a pattern of uh, precipitation that came through there. So, um, you know, but I think overall we continue to be in good shape with irrigation water supplies. We came into the year in good shape. I think uh, the careful management at Harlan County Reservoir this year um, you know, we've been seeing that and, and still have very good water supplies in Harlan County Reservoir uh, as we're heading into the fall, which should mean good things for us next year uh, for all of us. So we're, we're excited about that still. Um, I guess kind of shifting from water supply to our integrated water management planning. Uh, you know, we, we do a lot of planning all across the state with all 23 natural resource districts and I think we've discussed in the past that we actually had some uh, law changes here a few years back that required us to develop a basin-wide plan, the Republican Basin. So that effort uh, finalized the plan in late 2018 and sort of formally took effect in uh, March of 2019. And then this year we held our first annual meeting under that plan. You know, that process consisted of over 40 stakeholders uh, 15 stakeholder meetings uh, over multiple years. So a pretty extensive process. Sort of key outcomes from that were to develop uh, measurable hydrologic objectives, is what they're called in the plan, for assessing future progress. You know, there's, there's a whole host of those laid out in the plan, but, you know, a few of the highlights are sort of, you know, laying out uh, different monitoring goals and timelines for achieving various actions. Um, and those are kind of all spelled out in more specifics of the plan. But uh, again, want to thank staff for all the effort that went into getting that plan developed, completed, and now being uh, implemented. So it's, that's been a, a great success. It will be leading us to revisit our individual integrated management plans in the basin. And uh, we're currently working on making updates there as well. Uh, in terms of kind of investments in the basin and, and water management, I guess I'd just highlight a few of those. There's, there's always a lot of activity going on, a lot of investment all across the basin. Uh, we've obviously uh, been, been working to use the settlement funds that we received from Colorado uh, and invest those back into surface water infrastructure in the basin. And one of the major investments we've made so far was a $2 million um, distribution to the Frenchman Cambridge Irrigation District to do automation of uh, their Meeker Driftwood system. And so that project's well underway now um, and, and look forward to getting that wrapped up over the next uh, year or so. Uh, we're also looking at using those same funding sources to evaluate different conjunctive management options that may exist within the NBID system, the Nebraska Bostwick Irrigation District system. And uh, hope to be bringing forward some of those concepts in the future for discussion amongst the states. But we're excited about some of the potential there um, to, to look at some options that we think will really help Nebraska Bostwick Irrigation District have more reliable supplies in the future and also hopefully maintain uh, greater water supplies in Harlan County Lake for, for the basin as well. 
Uh, the NRDs continue to invest significantly in their water management. Uh, we've been partnering with them on a number of uh, contracts. We, we have contracts in place with the Middle Republican NRD to provide $3.3 million of state money. And then that is matched with 40% local dollars. Uh, similarly, we have a contract with the Lower Republican uh, for those same amounts. And then we have a larger contract with the Upper Republican to support some of the works they're doing at targeted long-term retirements of, of uh, groundwater use. And that project was a $6 million state-funded project with a 40% match from the NRD. So some pretty significant investments going in, uh, looking at things like retirements, uh, improving technology that producers can use to reduce their water applications. Um, so a lot of exciting stuff going on, I think, in the water management area. I think in terms of kind of legislation uh, within Nebraska, you know, our, our legislature, like, like most, uh, sort of got split. Uh, we were, uh, we stopped in, uh, in April and then uh, readjourned in, in late July and then concluded last week. There were 17 days left in the session and they concluded that last week. I think most notably for us is, is actually been, and I'm gonna knock on wood here, um, that you know, financially we have not seen the major hits yet, like some of the surrounding states. Our revenues for FY20 actually came in just above forecast. Um, they were trending much above forecast prior to COVID, but we did still come in above forecast slightly. And then early projections for FY21 are a 1% reduction, but um, you know, there's still a lot to be seen here in terms of how this is going to fully unfold and affect uh, budgets going forward. So we're still trying to be very financially prudent and, and uh, certainly can appreciate what Kevin's going through with staffing and monitoring, uh, you know, positions that we need to retain in vacancy uh, to make sure we have a little bit more budget flexibility going forward. And even though it's not necessarily a requirement yet, we're certainly paying a lot of attention in that same area to, to make sure we can, uh, bring people on that, that will be able to support for the long term. Um, one bill that came out of the legislature that is, I guess, a little more significant to our agency was a requirement. This sort of follows on the uh, flooding of 2019, kind of the historic events of 2019. Uh, they passed a bill that requires our agency to take the lead in developing a flood mitigation plan for the state. So that's a statewide plan. It would be essentially a subsection to the overall state hazard mitigation plan, which is done by the um, Emergency Management Agency in Nebraska. But we will be taking the lead in developing that flood mitigation plan, which is sort of a chapter hazard mitigation plan. And so that effort will be getting underway uh, here over the next few months. And that uh, plan will come to conclusion in uh, sort of the middle of 2022. Um, I guess the, the last thing I'll just mention is uh, I, I mentioned at the outset that, uh, you know, we had Jeff retire uh, in late February. And actually just yesterday, our governor made an announcement that we have a new director uh, that will be taking over. And that is one Tom Riley, uh, which uh, many, I think, would, uh, would uh, recognize that name and have met Tom and worked with Tom over the years. He's uh, been a a key part of our team in working on Republican issues and other issues in the state. He'll be taking actually the director's role for our agency starting November 1st. So we're all excited about that and having another person, another person to help move these efforts forward. So I guess with that, I, I'd go ahead and conclude and just, you know, once again, thank Kansas, Colorado for um, our continued partnership and our commitment to work through um, issues and be productive in managing the waters of this basin and, you know, not forgetting who we're doing that work for, which is our constituencies. Um, you know, we're not just focusing on spreadsheets, but we're trying to focus on making sure that uh, we're doing the right things for our producers all across the basin and getting those outcomes to be as good as they can be for those folks. So um, we certainly look forward to continuing those discussions. And I know Chris was referring to some very specific conversations about the resolution, which, you know, those, those are things we'll certainly commit to 
having those conversations with Kansas and continuing to move those efforts forward. So I guess with that, I'll go ahead and conclude my remarks and uh, see if anybody has any questions. Uh, no, no questions really, Jesse. I, I appreciate the, the commitment. Um, congratulations to Mr. Riley and uh, thank you for your, your service as acting or interim director. Um, uh, appreciated working with you in this capacity and look forward to working with you still. <laughs> so. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't plan on going anywhere. So yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> But uh, okay. Um, uh, we'll Jesse, if I could, uh, likewise, I'd like to offer my congratulations to, to Tom and, and thank you for the work you've done, but we'll continue to do as you just alluded to. Yes. Thanks. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Um, well, we'll just keep moving through the agenda here. Uh, we have up next our federal reports. And I think the first one up would be uh, Craig Scott is likely the, the one to provide that report for the Bureau of Reclamation. Um, I think Elizabeth, are you going to pull Craig's report up for him? Is that correct? Mm -hmm. There it goes. Yep. Craig, uh, okay. read your report there. Okay, um, I'm Craig Scott. Um, I'm rec uh, representing Reclamation's Nebraska, Kansas area office. Um, we have provided a report um, for the record that's similar to what we uh, have provided and submitted in, in the last several years. Um, this report contains uh, hydrologic data for 2019 as well as current reservoir uh, information through July of uh, 2020. I will start by looking at uh, 2019. Um, we experienced above average precipitation throughout the basin. Um, historic high elevation was reached in Harlan County, surpassing the previous historic high established in 1960. The computed average inflow at Harlan County uh, in 2019 exceeded 400,000 acre feet. Um, Irrigation supplies in, from Harlan County, of course, um, exceeded um, the trigger level of 119,000 acre feet. So 2019 was not a water short year, which is the first year since 2012 that we have not had sufficient water supplies to meet that criteria at, from Harlan County in the basin. Uh, moving on to 2020, um, current reservoir data is included in the report and is summarized in Table 2. So I won't go into a lot of detail um, on that except to note that irrigation supplies from Harlan County in 2020 also exceeded 119,000 acre feet. So 2000, or this year continues to be a non-water short year. Um, the eastern or the central and eastern part of the basin, um, as several as previously mentioned, you know, 2020, definitely not the same type of precipitation year as 2019, but we did experience some significant um, rainfalls in the central part and eastern part of the basin uh, during July, um, which was very timely. We started off the year with some significant high irrigation demands. And it looked like we were going to really pull on the reservoirs, but we were fortunate enough to catch some rains in July that significantly reduced irrigation demand. And so we actually slowed down on the draw of the reservoir elevations. And also uh, was fortunate enough to catch some significant inflows into Swanson Reservoir in the upper part of the basin from the previously mentioned storms that occurred in in the upper part of the basin in eastern Colorado and western Nebraska. I'd also like to just take a moment here just to, to make a couple general comments um, and highlight again the, uh, the Boswick Irrigation District's MOA that they executed at the end of 2018. Um, this, the, the MOA um, outlines the procedure for sharing uh, the water supply in Harlan County 
and identifies those procedures for accounting of those supplies. One of the new elements of the MOA uh, was the establishment of separate storage accounts for each irrigation district in Harlan County Lake. And this was a change from the historic procedures um, that was needed to align with the RRC resolution approved in 2016. In 2019, um, because of the flood operations that occurred for the better part of the year, day-to-day -day accounting was not necessary. So we didn't actually implement all those procedures or accounting procedures um, in 2019. But this year, um, we have implemented those accounting procedures. And from our perspective, the, the changes developed within the new MOA have gone very well. And fortunately, each irrigation district was able to start off with a full water supply um, prior to the irrigation season. So I'd like to commend both the Boswick Irrigation Districts, Nebraska Boswick in Nebraska and Kansas Boswick Irrigation District, for their efforts in adopting, um, adopting and adapting to those changes um, and making the first year of MOA a success. Lastly, I'd just like to mention, um, some of this was mentioned as well, but I'd like to recognize and note some of the ongoing investments each of our federal irrigation districts have been making um, not only in 2019, but 2018, but also in some previous years. But those efforts are continuing, and I'd just like to note some of those efforts. Um, Frenchman Cambridge um, has implemented numerous automation projects in each of their canal systems. Um, just recently, they are completing a complete automation of Meeker Driftwood Canal which should be fully um, implemented moving into the 2021 irrigation season. Frenchman Valley Irrigation District um, continues to explore and implement uh, the early diversions of natural flows into their canal system um, for the retiming and recharging of their, their the aquifer along the, their canal. And also, um, as mentioned, Boswick Irrigation District in Nebraska is in the final stages of completing their automation of the Franklin Canal system, um, which has been a major investment um, that they've taken on here just recently. Moving on to Kansas then, um, Almeda Irrigation District just recently had, uh, uh, adopted changes to their operations um, where they are now um, taking advantage of early season diversions and then utilizing those uh, diversions for uh, irrigation deliveries um, later in the summer. And then finally, um, Kansas Boswick Irrigation District continues to um, convert open canal systems to buried pipes and is also looking at potential automation uh, of the Cortland Canal system. So in all, uh, cumulative, you know, millions of dollars have been um, spent to upgrading these systems, and I think these, um, these uh, upgrades will benefit uh, all users in the basin for years to come. So with that, that concludes my report. Okay, thanks, Craig. Uh, any questions for Craig? Okay, well, we appreciate it, Craig. I know we certainly appreciate the uh, attention you're giving to the accounting and the information you're sharing with regard to tracking those Harlan County releases this year. Okay, uh, next up on the agenda, we would have a report out from the Corps of Engineers. I, I think we reached out to a couple of folks and, and didn't hear that they were planning to attend, but I guess I'd ask, is there anybody on from the Corps that would like to provide a report? Okay. Okay, well, next up then would be the U.S. Geological Survey. Uh, I don't know, Jason, if you wanted to do that report or if John will be doing that report. Uh, John's going to be doing that report. Okay. Thank you. 
All right, looks like everything's working here. I'm John Miller with the U.S. Geological Survey out of the uh, water, uh, out of the uh, Nebraska field office, um, responsible for the operations in the Republican River uh, Basin. Um, probably just going to, uh, rather than go through site by site, just going to give uh, some of the highlights of uh, what went on in the 2019 water year. Um, as has been kind of noted and stated, uh, there's been, both years have been really interesting. Um, the, uh, the eastern part of the Republican Basin in the 2019 year received significant, uh, significant rain events resulting in um, some, some much improved overall flows. Sapa Creek uh, come in 15, ranking of 15 out of 17 out of 73 years of record. Uh, Guide Rock, uh, Republican River at Guide Rock was actually the seventh highest uh, annual mean flow in 69 years of record. And the Republican River at Orleans was ranked 13th highest mean discharge in 72 years of record. Um, in fact, we were able to, uh, it, it, this is probably more of an in-house type thing, but we, we made the fourth highest discharge measurement that has ever been made at uh, the Republican River at Orleans um, in July of uh, 2019. Moving to the western part of the basin, uh, the, uh, just some of the kind of, kind of the highlights, Rock Creek near Parks, um, for the 2019 water year was uh, come in with the second lowest annual mean in uh, 79, 79 years of record. And the South Fork of the Republican and the Rickery both uh, continue to remain within the lower 10 percentile uh, for the periods of records. Um, and uh, moving, moving east, uh, Red Willow actually reported the lowest annual mean discharge in 58 years of, of record. Um, as uh, the, um, the flood of just to, just some notes on the, uh, on that extensive rain event that occurred in the uh, Binkelman area oh, about a month ago. Um, and so these are preliminary, I guess you could, you could call it that, but, um, the uh, the event at uh, South Fork of the Republic, and that's going to be in the top ten of uh, of all reported events over the period of record. Um, we were able to obtain some measurements at both discharge measurements at a number of sites that really improved the uh, positioning of those stage discharge ratings. Um, I know I've received some questions concerning the, uh, the flows on that event at the Arikari River, and we were able to actually, a couple weeks ago, completed an indirect measurement that uh, did compile all the flow that did pass the gauge. That, those numbers haven't, haven't come to my desk yet, but they are being, uh, they are being computed. Um, with that, I think, uh, and uh, we also did do a, uh, an indirect measurement at the Buffalo Creek gauge near Hagler. And I believe that's gonna come in as peak of record gauge height and peak of record discharge. So it was some really impressive flows at those sites. It was an exciting uh, number of days for, uh, uh, for my office. Um, with that, um, I don't think I have, I have anything else to mention and would entertain any questions if they're if there is any. Okay, thanks, John. Uh, anybody have questions for John on the USGS report? Okay, well, uh, that concludes our federal reports on the agenda. I guess next up on the agenda would be to go through our committee reports. And that would be our engineering committee report. Uh, our current engineering committee chair is Carol Cloudy with Nebraska. 
So Carol, do you want to provide the engineering committee report, please? Yes, thank you. Um, hi, everyone. As Jesse said, I'm Carol Flotty. I'm the engineering committee chair this year. And we went over the engineering committee report in a lot of detail at this morning's working session. So I will uh, be more hitting the highlights today during this meeting. But um, this is the report of the engineering committee's activities for the past years. It does start with an executive summary. So uh, that first paragraph highlights what we have accomplished this year. Um, I will say that what is here in the executive summary are paraphrases of the actual assignments that we were given. So I'll show where you can find in the engineering committee report what the full assignments were. Um, but in over the past year, since the August 22nd, 2019 RCA meeting, uh, the engineering committee met five times and we completed uh, the assignments of holding quarterly meetings, uh, exchanging information um, for the accounting, which would include data and documentation, uh, finalizing the 2019 accounting, reviewing the flood flows provisions of the RSA accounting procedures uh, so that 2019 accounting results can be approved at this year's annual meeting, continuing work on documenting historical changes to the RSA accounting procedures, providing updates on the progress of new and ongoing management strategies for maintaining compact compliance, continued development and maintenance of the RSA administrative website that serves an informational page for the public and provide regular updates to the engineering committee on that website. Um, continue work on providing updates on improving accounting tools developed by the engineering committee and preparing the 2019 annual meeting report. So those are the assignments that we completed this past year. And uh, starting on the second page of the report, it breaks down each assignment and what we actually actually did accomplish for that assignment and our recommendations for the uh, following year that the tasks continue or are, are repeated. With that, I will move on to the committee's recommendations for the RCA, which uh, begin on the fourth page of the report. Uh, the first one is that the EC recommends the proposed 2019 accounting that's presented in attachment two of the engineering committee report and in the spreadsheet titled RCA accounting 2019 final dot XLSX uh, for approval by the RCA today. Um, upon approval of this accounting, then the spreadsheet will be placed on the website. Uh, the second recommendation is to continue uh, modeling and data tasks uh, with our consultant Principium and Mathematica at the same level of services in 2019. Uh, the third recommendation is that we would continue to maintain and update the RSC website and that we request that the commissioners provide us with any additional comments and direction on the website if they'd like to see something uh, different or additional on it. The fourth item, uh, which I'll read here as it's written, just because this does set up some of the further uh, items on the agenda, which are action on updating the accounting procedures and the rules and regulations, is a recommendation re related to the flood flows provision. So I will read this one. Uh, we're recommending discussion on the engineering committee's finding that the accounting procedures revised May 27th, 2017, do not properly implement the flood flows provisions at the Hardy gauge with respect to the calculation of computed water supply above and below guide rock, and that attachment six calculates the virgin water supply guide rock to Hardy rather than computed water supply guide rock to Hardy, which would reduce the virgin water supply by the relevant flood flows as described in section two definitions and section three basic formulas. Due to the infrequent occurrence of flood flows, the engineering committee recommends deferred resolution of the matter to a future date necessitated by and preceding impact to Nebraska's Table 5C compliance. The engineering committee is providing a proposed revision to the RCA accounting procedures and reporting requirements and subsequent revision to the rules and regulations to make note of these findings. Um, i also note with, with regards to that recommendation is that um, the attachment three of the engineering committee report includes a summary of all of the work that we've done related to this issue over the past year, all of the proposals and, and um, communications about it from the states. 
to help us as we continue to work on this issue moving forward. Um, okay, and then moving on, the fifth recommendation from the engineering committee to the commissioners is discussion of the recommended EC assignments and, and uh, for the following year, an agreement on the set of assignments that we have proposed. Um, and then in the report, we, we propose the list of recommended assignments for the year, which is the next agenda item. Um, all of the proposed assignments are either repeats or continuations of the assignments from last year. So that would be as, as listed here, uh, since I kind of read all of them. When I talk about what we accomplished for this year, I won't re repeat them. Uh, the one to note that is slightly different would, than last year would be uh, the flood flows one, number four here, because we did accomplish half of the flood flows assignment for this year. We have reworded this assignment this year to, to just the part that we still need to work on, which is continuing to work on developing a recommendation for the flood flows provisions to bring them into conformance with the intent of the FSS. And I think that concludes my report on the engineering committee report. Are there any questions? Any questions for Carol? Uh, this is Chris. Uh, I don't have a question. I just want to thank you, Carol, for all the hard work you put into this. And uh, I know these are strange circumstances with uh, electronic document signing and all the things that we had to work through. Um, but uh, I think you pulled it off well. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Yes, definitely. Thank you to, to Carol and, and the whole engineering committee for the report. We appreciate that. I'll add my thanks to that too. Okay, um, we'll continue down our agenda. We, we have a placeholder on our agenda called Old Business. Um, I don't think there was anything here, but I guess I would check just to see if there's any other sort of discussion topics before we go into the new business and assignments. Uh, I don't know, Commissioner Rain or Badal, if you had anything. I, I don't have anything for this item. I have nothing. Okay. So then we're on to our agenda item for new business and assignments to compact committees. Uh, Carol just kind of outlined a lot of the actions we need to take and uh, recommendations of the engineering committee. Uh, the first one up there is an action on the updated accounting procedures. Um, this is again related to that flood flow provision that Carol was discussing in the engineering committee report. Um, and I think was aiming to identify uh, the this nature of this issue and the commitment to work on it into the future as was discussed in her report. So I guess I'd be looking for um, a motion to approve those updated accounting procedures uh, as provided by the engineering committee. I'll move that we accept the updated accounting procedures. I'll Thank second you. that. Thank you, Chris. Any discussion on that issue? Okay, so we'll take our vote. All those in favor, say aye. Hands aye. aside. Okay. okay, so that motion passes. We've uh, taken the action to update our accounting procedures. And because of that, uh, our rules and regulations of this uh, commission require us to, uh, to go through and update our rules and regulations because they reference a specific dated version of the accounting procedures. So the next item up for action would be, um, we would be looking for a motion to adopt uh, the updated rules and regulations for the Republican River Compact Administration. So moved. I'll second that. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion on the rules and those modifications to change the date? No, okay, so we'll take that vote. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Kansas, aye. I from Colorado. I from Nebraska. So that motion passes. We now updated our rules and regulations and 
in accordance with the accounting procedures as well. Uh, the next action up for us then is to take uh, action on the engineering committee report and assignments that were presented by uh, Carol during her, her presentation of the report. Uh, do we have a, a motion to accept the engineering committee report and the assignments that were presented? Mr. Chair, I'll move that we accept the engineering committee report and the associated assignments. I'll second. Okay, thank you for the first and second. So um, any discussion on that? Okay, take a vote. All those in favor, aye. Kansas, aye. Colorado, aye. Nebraska, aye. So that motion as well passes. So we're, we're clicking right through the agenda here. <laughs> um, the, uh, the next item up is action on 2019 accounting. So the engineering committee presented the, uh, the results of the 2019 accounting. Uh, so I guess I'd be looking for a motion to approve and adopt the 2019 accounting results from the engineering committee. So moved. Second. Okay. Motion and a second. So uh, any discussion related to the 2019 accounting? Discussion? We'll go ahead and take the vote. All those in favor of approving the 2019 accounting from the engineering committee, say aye, please. Kansas, aye. Colorado, aye. Nebraska, aye. So that too passes. We've adopted our 2019 accounting, which is uh, Nice that that has become a somewhat routine action for us to be able to complete in this group. That's a, that's a great outcome of the, of the past several years of working together. Um, next up then, we have action on a couple of resolutions honoring uh, former commissioners. Uh, I believe, Chris, you have a resolution for uh, former Commissioner Barfield. Uh, and uh, I guess I would uh, maybe suggest, I, I think, Chris, you typically like to see uh, the resolution maybe get read into the record. And, and if you were planning to do that, I can also do that with uh, former Commissioner Facet's resolution. And then maybe we could take those uh, both together in one action. Would that be acceptable? That sounds good to me, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I'll go ahead and okay. start. Are you ready? Okay. This is a resolution of the Republican River Compact Administration honoring David W. Barfield. Whereas David W. Barfield of Lawrence, Kansas, retired as Kansas Chief Engineer, thereby ending his duties as the Kansas Commissioner to the Republican River Compact Administration, RRCA, after having served faithfully in the position of Commissioner for 12 years and Whereas Mr. Barfield's extensive knowledge of water laws and hydrology of the Republican River Basin have been a key asset to the state of Kansas in the original 1998 U.S. Supreme Court case and resulting final settlement stipulation for the Republican River Compact. And whereas Mr. Barfield provided excellent representation of the state of Kansas constructive insights into complex issues discussed during the several Republican River arbitrations and the continuation of the original Supreme Court case. And whereas Mr. Barfield displayed a positive and collaborative attitude while forging lasting partnerships to benefit the state of Kansas during the three states meetings and negotiations. And whereas Mr. Barfield facilitated discussions on many occasions with local stakeholders in Kansas to provide water users with a better understanding of the Republican River Compact and efforts made to resolve issues between the states. Now, for, now therefore, be it resolved that the Republican River Compact Administration does hereby acknowledge and express its appreciation for the contributions of David W. Barfield to this administration and extends to him the best wishes for continued good health and happiness in all his future endeavors. And that this resolution be entered into the records of the 2020 Annual Compact Administration meeting minutes and the annual report 
and hereby instructs the Kansas commissioner to send copies of this resolution to Mr. Barfield and the governor of the state of Kansas, adopted by the Republican River Compact Administration at the 2020 annual meeting of the RRCA. Okay, thank you, Chris. Um, and as I said, I think I'll just go ahead and take uh, the resolution uh, for former Commissioner Fassett as well, and then we can do those maybe both under one motion. Is that acceptable? Yes, that's acceptable. Okay, okay well, I will start uh, that resolution for uh, former Commissioner Fassett. Resolution of the Republican River Compact Administration honoring Gordon W. Jeff Fassett. Whereas Gordon W. Jeff Fassett of Cheyenne, Wyoming has resigned his position as director of the, the Nebraska Department of Natural Resources and the Nebraska Commissioner of the Republican River Compact Administration after having served faithfully in that position for more than four years while serving the people of Nebraska through his committed public service at the Nebraska Department of Natural Resources. And whereas as the Nebraska Commissioner to the Republican River Compact Administration and the Director of the Nebraska Department of Natural Resources, Jeff diligently represented the compact interests of the state of Nebraska and the residents of the Republican River Basin in Nebraska. And whereas while representing the state of Nebraska and its constituents, Jeff exhibited professionalism and integrity and provided leadership and guidance towards addressing the complexities of water administration and compact compliance, continually reaching out and communicating straightforwardly with the states of Colorado and Kansas to reach fair and reasonable, reasonable solutions to the many issues associated with the Republican River Compact. And whereas Jeff led the Nebraska Department of Natural Resources with openness and directness and consistently guided competing Nebraska water interests and Republican River Basin stakeholders through collaborative efforts, including the state of Nebraska's ongoing Republican River Compact compliance under his leadership. And, and whereas Jeff promoted increased certainty and predictability in water supply to allow for broader investment within the Republican River Basin to more efficiently and effectively manage water our most precious natural resource and grow the state of Nebraska. Now therefore be it resolved that the Republican River Compact Administration does hereby express its sincerest gratitude and appreciation to Gordon W. Jeff Fassett for his dedicated service to the Republican River Compact Administration in his position of Nebraska Commissioner and extends its best wishes to Mr. Fassett in all of his future endeavors and that the Republican River Compact Administration honors Mr. Fassett's service by including this resolution and appropriate dedicatory remarks to the 20, in the 2020 Republican River Compact Administration annual report meeting minutes, and hereby instructs the Nebraska Commissioner to send copies of this resolution to Mr. Fassett and the governor of the state of Nebraska, adopted by the Republican River Compact Administration at the 2020 annual meeting of the Republican River Compact Administration. Thank you. Um, I guess with that, I would uh, entertain a motion to adopt both Mr. resolutions honoring David Barfield and Gordon W. Jeff Bassett. Mr. Chair, this is Kevin Bryan. I'd like to first just, if I could, I'd like to first express my, my appreciation and admiration for both Jeff Bassett and David Barfield and the, the work they've done for their states and the work they've done working with Colorado. I, I appreciate the ability to work with them during my first two and a half years or so in my position. They've been uh, an obvious influence in progress with everything we've done as three states. And with that, I'd like to make a motion that we adopt the resolution honoring both Jeff Bassett and David Barfield. Second that. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Um, I guess we'll take our vote. All those in favor, aye. Kansas, aye. Colorado, aye. Nebraska, aye. So we will certainly make sure uh, to get that resolution to Jeff and uh, 
let him know the kind words, Kevin. We appreciate that. So, and you too, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I guess with that, we've reached the point on the agenda where we have uh, the item for remarks from the public. Um, you know, there's, there's different ways in which we can handle this. Uh, we can certainly see if po folks are interested. It might be good to express your interest in the chat box to just let you let us know that you plan to make public comments. Uh, we certainly don't want to miss anybody that uh, wants to provide <laughs> such comments. Um, so if, if you wanted to indicate that in the chat box, that might be uh, beneficial to helping us manage this. I guess though I can ask, is, is there anyone from the public that would like to uh, provide comments? Yes, this is Rob Lenz with our RWCB. I would like to have a chance to weigh in, please. Okay, thank you. Go ahead and proceed, please, Rob. Okay, um, like I stated, my name is Rod Lenz. I'm serving as president of the RWC at this time, and I wanna thank you for allowing me to speak, first of all. And I just wanna share some of the information on a few things that we're working on at this time. Uh, first, uh, our South Fork River Restoration Coalition, or SFERC project. Um, the coalition is made up of six entities, and we're dedicated to the reclamation of the former Bonnie Reservoir area. We've selected a a final concept to promote and going forward. I, I'd like to just uh, touch on that a little bit with everybody. The concept will consider flood control, set of sediment mitigation, freatified control, reestablishment of a canoe river channel throughout the former reservoir, as well as increased water flow. We will also consider recreation and economic opportunities. Uh, yesterday, we had the opportunity to meet with a potential project manager who would head the fundraising <clears throat> and the project development. And we do have some leads for some major funding and have all actually already applied for some of those funds. So I just wanna let you know that that project is going forward. Um, this project is slated to cost somewhere between six and $11 million, depending on the degree and the amount of silt that needs to be moved and stabilized. Next, uh, RRWCD has been very busy promoting our two water retirement programs, first EQIP or Environmental Quality Incentives Program and the CREP program, the Conservation Reserve Enhancement Program. Uh, we have enhanced our dollar contribution to the retirement by using the $2 million that was offered by Kansas and through the Colorado Water Conservation Board. We're using that to up our share of the retirement funds to uh, $200 an acre for the first 10,000 acres and that is very much appreciated. Um, next on a, the information list I'd like to share is on the 2018 Farm Bill, when it comes to the CREP program, there, was, there is a provision that would allow for, allow for dry land farming of CREP. And that's where the, the acres would be permanently, re, the water on those acres would be permanently retired. And then those acres could be reinstated as, as dry land. Uh, the provision was not allowed because it was determined to be contrary to the original program intent. Uh, it came to our attention that Ag Secretary Sonny Perdue was never made aware of the provision and therefore did not weigh in on the issue. We are currently working with Senator Michael Bennett, who is on the Senate Ag Committee. Uh, he will use his position, hopefully, to try to shepherd the provision closer to Secretary Perdue. If we can get this provision implemented, it will greatly enhance our ability to, to attain the goal of 25,000 acres retired in the South Fork focus zone, according to the resolution adopted in 2016. Uh, to date, our RWCD has, has helped to retire 3,000 acres. And also throughout the basin to date, we've invested $72 million of our user funds and it's all been dedicated to compact compliance. And lastly, our Master Irrigator Colorado program completed its first class this spring. It included 23 producers throughout the basin. Uh, Brandy Bacara and Amy Kremen are heading up that group and are doing a fantastic job. They are already making plans for 2021. I just wanted to share that information for, with you guys, and I thank you for letting me uh, do that and represent the Republican River Water Conservation District in this meeting. Thank you, Rod, for your comments. Uh, any questions for Rod? Okay, keep moving on here. Uh, I haven't seen anybody else indicate their desire to talk in the chat box, but I would check one more time. Uh, does anybody else uh, would they like to provide public comment? Okay, 
Okay, uh, looks like we've ended the public comment. So next on the agenda is to discuss future meeting arrangements. Uh, I, I think uh, with regard to future meeting arrangements, Nebraska will continue to be the host state for one more year. Uh, we certainly will make every effort we can to have uh, a meeting in the basin uh, next year and hopefully in person. Although I got to say, I think this actually went uh, pretty well today. I appreciate everybody's efforts to, to make this go pretty seamlessly and, and uh, I think very efficiently. Uh, so we'll be in touch, I think. We'll work with the other states and uh, you know identify a specific date, maybe at our next three states meeting, we can do that. Uh, you know, generally we'll probably be looking at this same time of year. We tend to be kind of in the second half of August uh, and we'll try to identify a location in the basin that we might target for next year. I guess with that, I would uh, see if there's any maybe final comments from either of the commissioners before we adjourn. Yeah, I have nothing to add. Uh, I'm happy to answer questions. I just want to say I, I do think the meeting went pretty well today. Uh, congratulations, Nebraska, on pulling this off, <laughs> and uh, that, that's that's really it. So thank you. Okay, well, thank if you, I may, Chris. I do have I do have yep. one housekeeping uh, thing to note for the commissioners um, because we are doing this electronically. Watch your email this afternoon for the documents to sign, since we'll be signing them electronically. So those will come later today. We'll do. Thank you, Carol. Also, you, handouts handouts that were viewed uh, and discussed during this meeting are available on the RRCA website and also on the Nebraska uh, DNR website. Thank you, Elizabeth. Okay, I guess with that, I would uh, seek a motion to adjourn our meeting and bring it to closure here for the 2020 uh, Annual Compact Administration meeting. So I will move that we adjourn today. Then I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, aye. Hands us aye. Colorado aye. Nebraska aye. So once again, I appreciate everybody participating today. Uh, hope everybody has a great weekend. We'll talk to you later. Thank you. Thank you.